Professor Picard in early 19th uh, put the basic science on this field and without his work we couldn't make uh, navigation in uh, our knee surgery. Professor Picard started his work in Grenoble, now he works in Glasgow. He is president of uh, Chaos Organization in UK. He was founder of this organization and I am very glad that we have Professor Picard here and he will have here a plenary lecture. Frederick, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, ladies, ladies and, and gentlemen, this is um, a privilege and an honor for me to be here and I really like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, to speak about uh, a topic uh, that I've been working on for the last uh, 15 years. When we talk about computer assisted surgery, uh, robotic and uh, custom guide technology are part of it. Uh, but navigation remains the oldest technology, if I dare to say so, uh, for which we have comprehensive uh, surgical evidences. So therefore, navigation is going to be our underlying uh, theme today for the next uh, 30 minutes. So here are my disclosures for myself and uh, our uh, research uh, uh, institution. And I'd like to start uh, with a few questions. First of all, I'd like to start how many among uh, the audience uh, of you are doing total knee replacement? Can you raise your hands? Then, how many are using navigation regularly? How many are using navigation for every single knee? And uh, how many are using other technologies, uh, such as uh, robotic and custom guides? All right. So, to the question, is computer-assisted total knee surgery uh, mainstream? Uh, the answer is clearly not. Thank you very much for your attention. So, just joking, but let's see. Um, the, someone uh, said one of the many great things, indeed, have been achieved by those who uh, choose to not leap into the mainstream. And this is why I'd like to share with you uh, some reflections which uh, could explain why this is still not mainstream. So what I'd like to talk to you today, uh, after a few words of introduction, is I will report very briefly uh, the surgical evidences uh, about uh, navigation. Afterwards, uh, we will see where we really are with this technology, uh, but uh, also if it's then uh, so great and it's still clearly not mainstream, why are, where are the resistances of, uh, this, for this technology? And finally, I'd like to shed some light on the near future with the generation of computer savvy uh, clinicians, uh, those who were born with iPhone, uh, iPad, and I cannot live without co a computer. So first, uh, what is mainstream? Uh, mainstream is the prevailing current of thought, influence, or activity of for us orthopedic surgeon. And what is not mainstream? What is not mainstream is a subculture, a contraculture, undergrad, uh, undergrad culture of or, or fiction. So is CAS an underground culture? Are navigators or computer users like marginal geeks? Well, looking at the international figures, except Germany, around 20% of the uh, uh, knee, navigator, knee uh, surgeons are using navigation, the rest of the world is still very shy with the technology. In uh, 2008, uh, uh, Friedrich and Verdung published a very um, interesting paper and they reported that out of 389 uh, answers from 3,330 members of ESCA and the uh, Swiss uh, Orthopedic Society, 52% were computer users, most of them CT-free uh, systems for uh, total knee replacement. And among them, 26% uh, 
uh, use it in more than 75% of the cases, which would uh, consider as obviously mainstream. And why uh, these uh, users were quite keen to use uh, uh, this technology? Well, to perfect alignment for the yes answer. And for the opponents, uh, they thought that infection risk and uh, operative time prevented them, them to use uh, this system. So, however, the number of publications uh, associated with the uh, CAS, two CAS, grown uh, n notably uh, over the, the years, showing a clear interest in, in the field, but also providing surgical evidences for using this technology. Um, an excellent paper from Robert Siston, PhD from Stanford, and uh, now professor in Columbus University, did a comprehensive review uh, of the literature in 2007. And this paper was um, awarded by both ISB, International Society of Biomechanics, and AB, Association of Biomechanics, in 2007. And what he showed, that there is no more risk or complications to uh, use uh, navigation. There is probably even less complications because uh, less uh, blood loss and uh, uh, so less uh, fat embolism. There is... Um, uh, with the use uh, of uh, navigation, a better and coronal sagittal alignment with respect to conventional instrumentation. There are still controversies regarding rotational alignment, but there is uh, not really uh, regarding measurements of uh, gaps in flexion and extension, so for ligament balancing. There is evidence uh, now uh, about the fact that functional results are better. Two uh, papers um, from Chong and Longstaff in 2009 showed uh, both uh, these uh, results. And even cost is probably not an issue, as we're going to see. And uh, finally, there is, uh, this is a fantastic teaching tool. I'm, I'm sure that some of them, of, of us and some of you, uh, have used this system you you have uh, seen that the value, the great value of uh, uh, teaching. And there are differences uh, between uh, systems. So, could surgical evidences be enough to make uh, this uh, technology mainstream? Well, never draw any conclusions, even with evidences. So, in spite of uh, evidences, uh, at what stage CAS is? Where, where are we with this technology? Um, John Adder um, uh, published this very interesting book about effective innovation, and he reminded us what we usually hear when something new comes out. Don't be ridiculous. It's useless. Uh, good idea on principle, but uh, that can work in simulation, but not in reality. Uh, don't complicate simple things, and interesting, but uh, too expensive. This is what we uh, can hear or read uh, in, after uh, any uh, kind of innovations in any field at any time uh, just comes uh, to, to light. And fortunately, some of the past innovators were strong enough to continue for the best of the society. After 805 trials, the White Wright brothers took off finally with their first airplane. Uh, well, CAS has uh, already taken off, but how far are we with it? When you try to match CAS technology evolution steps, for example, with the arthroscopy uh, technology, very close in terms of evolution, um, CAS is... Uh, very close to the first steps, new techniques, new anatomical vision, new surgical approach, new companies with uh, cameras, trackers, LEDs, and so on, and new society, scientific societies with the CARS, with Americas, with CHAOS. But obviously, we still don't have any new consensus, new legal rules, and new goals. So we are uh, about here. Are we there yet? Well, absolutely not. That's for sure. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar this, uh, with this uh, logistic uh, curve. 
uh, that is possible to match um, to many uh, phenomena. Uh, it is a relationship between P, uh, the population, and T, uh, the time. And applied to any uh, innovation and production, you see a slow adoption uh, at the beginning, obviously, and then covering the entire uh, population, then the surgical population over the time. So the logistic curve could be applied to CAS and divided in different groups, starting from the uh, enthusiastic innovators and finishing by the skeptical laggards. Uh, CAS is about um, here for the early majority and maybe about uh, here for Germany and the rest of the world is somewhere here. This is where what we call the chasm, the chasm phase. So will CAS go beyond chasm phase? Uh, this is what we are going to look at. Among all the, the resistances uh, to change in general, they are the usual suspects. First of all, the uh, current results uh, in total knee replacement, the uh, surgeon's age, the operative time, um, as we pointed out already, the system ergonomy. This is what we call the easy-to-use factor or easy-to-read factor. We will see what uh, this is about. The cost for users, for surgeons, the cost for providers, the companies, and finally, the role of disruptive innovations. First, the current results in conventional total knee replacements. They are excellent, uh, according to many of us. So why changing our practice? Well, when you look at the, the literature, and the, there are a lot of papers, um, uh, if you look at the midline out of... Uh, almost 9,700 papers, you will find that roughly 30% are about complications, 22 about pain, 14% uh, uh, about affection, and so on. And the most recent one is from Sharkey and all, uh, who published in 2002 in CORE, Why are TKR, TK failing today? And uh, you see in 24% of the cases, aseptic loosening and instability in 21.2% of the cases. Maybe that could have been avoided using a more accurate tool to do the procedure. So, and when you look as well at the functional results, and this is the, one of the um, paper published in Act of Orthopedica in 2009, out of 102 patients uh, on TKR five years, 86% um, of responses, the satisfaction was 80% uh, regarding the function. So if you look at the overall number in the UK, 65,000 TKR, so that means 30,000 are not really satisfied with what we are doing, and especially because we are doing more young and more demanding uh, patients. Well, and put this in perspective, 20% of outliers... Uh, okay, so that means we haven't reached the, the targets for the patients in 20% of the cases. If you compare this uh, number to airplane navigation, so that means that roughly out of 800,000 flights uh, today, so per, per day, then about uh, uh, 160,000 would have landed in the wrong place. So, sorry guys, but some of you would have landed in Paris, Berlin, or Moscow, but not in Prague. So, well, sometimes uh, we would have been happy to, to have a little bit of help for our patients. Is age liability? When uh, age group means are considered, uh, the older uh, or the senior user can learn a new technique as well as the younger. But the older uh, performance is equal to younger performance with more practice. And the neurosciences showed us more recently that after five days of practice, the exact same neural circuitry in the, the front of the brain becomes active in the computer internet naive uh, subject. 
And when you look at this study from Friedberg here, uh, people using computer will reduce likelihood to retire early, especially those between 55 and 59. Well, it's up to us. What about uh, operative time? Um, the literature showed us that it is definitely um, a potential issue because it increases the, the, the surgery by about the 20 person, 23 percent of, uh, of the time, of the normal time, between 10 and uh, 20 minutes. Um, but this is, is it really uh, a restraining factor? Because 10 minutes, is it really an issue for the patient? It is maybe for your practice, but is it really for your patient? What about system ergonomy? A very interesting study uh, from um, Van Wielen uh, in the field of laparoscopic uh, surgery showed that poor ergonomic instruments are less often used than other with more accomplished uh, design. Well, it seemed so obvious uh, that the, this tool on the right is going to be more easier to use than this one on the left. And uh, the right one is more te technologically advanced. So in addition to the easy to use factor, there is also the easy to read factor. Fukushima, uh, one of the uh, pioneers in neurosciences, uh, in uh, neuro navigation in Japan, said too much information, even clever, can generate confusion. And that was a long time ago. And this is the easy to read factor. Too many informations on your computers. Too many informations are, are just bothering you and overwhelming you. And it has been uh, known for a long time. In 1879, a uh, French ophthalmologist named uh, Louis Chavi Emile Chaval discovered that eyes don't swept across uh, swept across word when reading in a perfectly fluid way. And when we use new technologies such as eye tracking technology, this is how we read. You start on the top of the page, then you go on the right, go down on the second, and then go down, and then go down, and go on the right, and go up. So basically, you can be completely lost uh, in your, on your monitor screen if you have uh, too uh, many information. Too much uh, information are definitely uh, not really useful. And most importantly, it distracts the brain from the work you are basically doing as you are distracted that at this minute uh, watching this picture. So too many informations and extraordinary uh, problem solving, uh, which is what we call the and connected information to the, to, the, to the problem we are trying to solve uh, is losing us. And also what we call divided attention, far too much information, are the two most important sources of uh, cognitive overloads. Uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry said um, a long time ago, a designer knows he has achieved perfection when uh, not when there is nothing left to add, but when there is nothing left to uh, take away. So there is still a lot of work on that, certainly. Let's move on to the cost issue, a very uh, contemporary topic. Using a Markov model based um, on the reduction of 14% uh, of the number of revisions due uh, to overall better care uh, uh, of total knee replacement uh, alignments, uh, Kevin Boschik and Novak showed in 2007 that basically cost um, is uh, not more expensive than the conventional technique. And it has been uh, recently confirmed uh, with the uh, study from uh, Lombardy, I think. So let's look at the uh, cost for providers, uh, the, 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 the companies. Well, it is extremely interesting to uh, see that many of these um, implants uh, company providers, uh, basically they don't match really to computer-assisted system provider, which can explain clearly 
our next slide, which is what we call a disruptive innovation. What is a disruptive innovation? Well, the big players in, in orthopedics and uh, most of the companies, they are not really keen to spend more money where they could potentially make more without uh, the, the, this new technology or any uh, new technology, which is fair enough. And I'm sure you, you are familiar with this concept of disruptive innovation. It is true for any sort of technology. A sustaining innovation, such as uh, computer-assisted surgery, which is just the ev normal evolution of uh, uh, conventional instrumentation. Well, um, uh, innovators uh, and, and especially companies are trying to jump directly to what we call disruptive innovation in order to cap basically to capture the, the customer a little bit earlier. Um, and we have seen this in the past. Uh, you are definitely familiar with the MIS, with mini-invasive mini uh, surgery techniques, and obviously instrumentations uh, going um, with it. And the recent custom guides or patient template specific uh, uh, jigs that you have, I'm sure, uh, heard uh, uh, very, very extensively more recently. So uh, it is a, a very important factor in the resistance to change to uh, basically the use of uh, navigation or computer assisted surgery. So when you look at um, basically the factors, the, uh, the resistance to change, well, current results are probably not um, uh, a good reason because we can always improve what we are doing. Age is not a good reason. Operative time, not really. Um, easy to use factor, definitely it is. Uh, cost for user, for surgeons, it's probably not really. Cost for providers, for company, certainly it is one. And disruptive innovation, why, in fact, it's related to the previous one, absolutely. So it seems that a few important factors are slowing uh, down ca chaos to uh, mainstream. Is it sustainable on the wrong run? Have we reached basically the, the chasm or are we stuck here? Certainly not. Certainly not. Why? Because of men like this man. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with this man, but this man is Sir Timothy, Timothy John. And this man called Tim Berners-Lee, he's a British scientist, a computer scientist, British physicist, and he's a MIT professor now. And uh, he has been credited uh, for his invention for the WWW, the World Wide Web. And that was Christmas 1990, meaning babies born that year, uh, or not far off, are our residents, your residents, and I'm, I'm sure some of them maybe are already in the room or will be soon. And computer, they don't have any secrets for them. They will use very soon computers able to download the entire library of U.S. Congress in just one second. And as uh, Sherry Hiller said, computer for them is just a matter of survival. Computers are already thinking differently from seniors. Here is a PET scan from a new computer and internet user. Here is an everyday computer and internet user brain. So they are thinking already differently. This is what we call the Flint effect. But have a good news for everybody. Uh, this is called neuroplasticity, which means we can definitely adapt. Indeed, uh, computer and internet, like any uh, technology, have modified human will. And you probably know that there are four different types of technology. Uh, they have been identified, uh, identified for quite some time. The first is the extent um, of our physical strength. And um, this is, uh, for uh, example, the things like uh, the hammer. Not very accepted, uh, you see, at the time, as you can see. Then the second is the extent to range of uh, sensitivity of our uh, senses. And 
then technology uh, enables us to reshape nature, uh, sometimes not for the best. And finally, the technology that extends uh, uh, or supports our mental powers. And CAS falls into this category. The new generation of computer savvy clinicians are already used to play with anything that could help them to solve problems, to find information, or to think quickly. The use of intellectual uh, technologies uh, shaped and reshapes the secretary uh, in uh, our head. And these, uh, they, they could deal with complex uh, computer design program, and, and which means that complex interfaces or user interface probably don't really bother them at all. Studies have shown that uh, computer users uh, are able to get through more uh, decision problem uh, solving than uh, book readers. So things are going to change, obviously, with this new generation. So is computer-assisted uh, total knee surgery mainstream? Uh, well, the answer is not yet, but... How are we going to tackle the growing number of control, checklists, guidelines, and the various health system checks? Uh, in a context where surgical evidence is going to be the rule, uh, where improvements of technology is going to be exponential, and when unmonitored procedures uh, is going to be banned with um, not, not, namely the um, arthroplasty registries. So, more importantly, uh, all the more recent figure confirms an uh, escalating number of uh, patients, number of patients, young patients, and demanding patients. And it, on the other hand, less money, less surgeons to do the job. So, among current uh, discussed options to sort uh, that out, and uh, there are two realistic, potentially, alternatives. One is to train uh, the non-specialist uh, surgeons uh, to do uh, safety uh, knee replacement. And this is probably why uh, the uh, custom jig uh, is maybe successful. And the second is to allow the development of high-volume, efficient arthroplasty uh, center. But both are suitable for the use of computer-assisted technology. Eric Schmidt, the founder of Google, said a few years ago, we use technology to solve problems that have never been solved before. So today, the meaning of it in CAS is uh, it, it would be maybe useful for improving uh, the unsatisfactory uh, results we can get from uh, knee arthroplasty. William Hallel, in his uh, very interesting book called uh, Technology Promise, said, but what is important is what people love about uh, the uh, technology uh, is it works. And that has been uh, a, a problem uh, in the past because we know that computer can improve uh, innovation, uh, knowledge, but some of the systems out there were terrible, and uh, it, it would have discouraged the most enthusiastic computer geek to do the job. And that has been, obviously, a very important issue with this technology. Surgeons have to be more involved in the design of the instrumentations, because ultimately, we, you, every, every single surgeon is the user, the ultimate user. The new generation won't work without computer. Norman Scott uh, reminded us a few months ago during a lecture he gave in Glasgow that he learned to do knee replacement with insole in aligning the tibial and tromedary roll to the wall tiles. As you probably remember, that was your first uh, cellular phone. Computers are in orthopedics are not rocket science. They are just improvements of our current instrumentation. And as Gandhi said, 
First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. And when you win, this is means three. So whatever you think, whatever you do, and whatever you hear, the computer will invade your workplace and your theater. It will be tomorrow. It will be after tomorrow, but it will be. Thank you very much for your attention.